Hi, this is going to be a special announcement. In about three or four weeks, I am planning to run a horror one-shot session, an online RPG session that focuses on extreme horror. Now, what do I mean by this? We are going to be using the behind the walls system. It's an extremely simple system. That's part of the extreme, very simple system. Each player character only has three stats. You have a stat that, that represents the physical capabilities. You have another one that has to do with the mental. You can also obtain some bonuses from two skills. And the system focuses on immersive horror, of course, because it's a role-playing game. But specifically, there's going to be a high probability of death. The other immersive aspect is that the players are going to participate as themselves in the horror game. That is, let's say that I am a player. I would be participating as Abraham. That would be my player character, Abraham. So maybe I think that, oh, I'm going to assign this number of points to cap physical capabilities. I'm going to assign this number of points to the mental, etc. And let's say my two skills are martial arts and medicine. So when it comes to those checks, I'm going to get a bonus. So this is all about you playing as yourself in this horror tabletop RPG session. And I am going to be requesting that the players speak in first person. Instead of saying, my character does this or my character does that, I approach the bookcase and start pulling out the books. I walk towards the strange being and say, do I know you? So it's kind of like that. It's all about that first person pull getting you really into your character and experiencing the frights and the suspense of the session. This session is going to be inspired by the, the back rooms, that sort of creepypasta, sometimes urban legend. Those rooms that are quite uncanny, or rather those sections of the world that you are suddenly, let's say you walk out of your car, you, yes, you step out of your car, you walk into your office and suddenly you're in a very different place. Perhaps it's, it looks like some sort of hotel room, but it has no furniture. It's completely empty. And you try to, you go back and try to open the door, the door uh, closed by itself, and now you are stuck here. What is going to happen? It is a game of great uncertainty. There is always a way, or perhaps in most cases, there is probably a way of escaping such rooms and those rooms could be anything maybe it's a park you suddenly step out of some some room some vehicle and you are now standing in a park in the middle of a park maybe it's an abandoned factory maybe it's a hospital who knows so there are going to be some silent hill moments as well who knows what lurks within those back rooms and there's going to be a high probability of death. When it comes to the resilience stat, that's kind of like your hit points, but in most cases, it's going to be instantaneous death. So there's going to be luck and skill involved through your role play, through your actions. Maybe you will be able to overcome the horrors that await, but perhaps you are unlucky and you get killed by some random glitch, some sort of effect. In a way, it is similar to the situations that you would experience in the film Stalker or the Roadside Picnic novel. It's kind of like that. You are in the zone. There's, I'm going to make sure that at least in the majority of situations, there is always some sort of obscure, almost unapproachable puzzle, a way to escape that room and keep on moving forwards, hopefully escaping the back rooms altogether. So you could say it is a series of interconnected pocket dimensions. 
Another thing, in order to, this is going to be roleplay by fire, trial by fire. If someone asks an out of character question, can my character do this? Is it possible for me to do, if you do that, something is going to kill you in the back rooms, unless someone co comes to your rescue and, and tells you, you are crazy, why are you speaking to nothing? Who are you talking to? Or maybe you can perhaps rescue yourself. If this is abused, then you will still be killed. But maybe, like I said, you, you made a mistake and you're like, can I, who am I talking to? Why am I speaking to no one? What is wrong with me? That's how I do to save yourself from that out of character immersion breaking moment. So yes, there is high lethality in this session and you're going to be playing as yourselves. Like I said, if I were to participate, I am Abraham. I, and before the game properly start, it could be like a, a session zero moment, sort of. The players are going to be introducing themselves and how they got into the back rooms. For example, in my case, maybe I say something like, mm, I'm going to be late. I quickly grab some things to eat along the way. I get inside my car and I uh, turn on the ignition and I suddenly find myself in the back rooms like that so, so just you uh, there's going to be a lot of immersion we're good like i said you need to speak in in first person all the time if you speak in third person that's character death the moment you die either killed by the back rooms or by the entities or by anything else by speaking out of character you're going to have to exit the chat room or the video chat room rather the studio and so the remaining survivors will still have to go through the adventure. I think it will take us about two hours, two hours and a, and a half tops. It's going to be a one shot, as I have mentioned. I plan to play it around 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, but there is going to be flexibility. We need to figure that out on our own. Um, I am aiming to play uh, during the weekdays, that is from Monday to Friday, sometime between 5 p.m. Central Standard Time and mid <laughs> hopefully not midnight, let's say um, 9 o'clock. But like I said, we can all figure out that after we, uh, if, you, if you express your interest on in playing, let me know in the comment section something like, I want to play, but I can only play between 6 to 9 or something. So that way we can uh, figure out the, our schedules, match them up to, to have that experience. I am looking between uh, 2 to four, no, two to 5 players. 2 to 5 players. Uh, the game will begin in about 3 weeks, more or less. That will give some time for players to express their interest, to participate and get enough players. If you're already playing in one of my uh, online games, go ahead and feel yourself uh, comfortable with expressing your interest in playing in this one shot. Don't think that, oh, because I am playing in Abraham's game already, I don't want to steal someone else's chance. Go for it, because uh, I have a very strict criteria when it comes to selecting players. Well, first, and this is kind of like apart from it, there aren't too many players expressing their interests most of the time, their interest. When it comes to the Dark and Terrible campaign, I only had uh, Crispy and Josh, and when it comes to Crispy, I personally invited him because I felt, felt like a gut instinct that he was a good role player, and so it turned out he was an excellent role player. In the case of Josh, he wasn't too certain about participating because he had been out of practice for three years, but I said, let's, let's do it. And as you can see, another excellent role player. In the case of the Super Smash Bros. campaign, uh, Tyler and Ryan, they expressed their interest in playing, and later on, Alberto. But the thing that I though they all had in common is that in the case of everyone except Josh, they have their own YouTube channels, their videos. So they had, let's say, a reputation to live up to. If they were to non-role play, 
If, if, if they were not, not to role play in this role playing game session, well, everyone would look down upon them. In the case of Josh, we had been talking about role playing for a long time, and I had already ascertained that he was a good role player. You can tell this by the conversation, because based on the integrity and the coherence of the uh, person's exchanges, dialogues. But that also means that I am not going to. I'm going to give no priority, little to no priority whatsoever, to someone that has no avatar, that has no videos, because I want a quality session. There is too much risk to invite someone that could be qualified as a rando. It sounds harsh, but that's the way things are. Maybe it's someone that just a psycho that just wants to uh, moon everyone in the session. Maybe we, get, we all get together to play. We're in the studio and suddenly this guy pulls down his pants and <laughs> moons the, or shows his um, private areas, so to speak, private parts. So I am not accepting that, of course. So I am looking for people that have a certain reputation to them. A couple of people have sometimes expressed their interest. They have no avatars, no videos. This is nothing against you. Like I said, this is because I really like to be extra cautious. That's why I've never had those situations. I never had those horror RPG moments because I am very selective about the people that play in my sessions. So just to summarize things, it's going to be a one shot. It's going to happen in about three weeks. It's a horror one shot based on the back rooms, those extra dimensional spaces that you accidentally go into them unexpectedly. Everything is going to happen in first person. There's going to be a high chance of death. In a way, you could say that it's a sort of escape the room type of situation or ex escape the rooms rather. You have no idea on how to get out of these back rooms. You will need to figure out things as you go. And I'm, I won't pull any punches. If someone dies, that's it. So it's also going to be very exciting. Will you be able to survive all the way to the end? Because if things happen like that, maybe no one survives. And I'm perfectly fine with that. No character survives. And remember, it's going to be you playing as yourself. If you are uh, Bob, you're going to be playing as Bob. If you are Jim, you're going to be playing as Jim. You only need to use your first name, no last name necessary. In the case of nicknames that are quite common to the person, like for example, in the case of Crispy, he has already given his real name in a, in a video, but he goes by the name of Crispy. So if he wanted to participate as Crispy, he could be like, call me Crispy, right? And it's going to be funny, right? Because you're going to be role-playing as yourself. You don't need to pretend to be someone else. You're going to be role-playing yourself. Like in my case, Abraham, I'm suddenly in the back rooms. I'm going to be like, I knew these places were real or something, you know, like, <laughs> just to give like a funny example, which I don't think they, they are. I'm just giving an example. I th maybe in some ways it could be related to some urban legends of hidden physical places that you perhaps confuse with an extra dimensional place, but it's actually a secret underground passage made by certain organizations. Could be. But I hope you will find this one shot interesting. I encourage you to, to play an excellent way of learning how to role play. If you haven't role played before, this is going to be a trial by fire because if you don't role play, you're going to die in the game and you will be out of the session. So yes, I really invite you to participate. You won't regret it. It's going to be one of the more intense horror experiences or surreal experiences. I can promise you, you that you know that I am quite serious about horror in role-playing games. Once again, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.